go live now to Nicola Sturgeon, joining us from Edinburgh. Thank you very much for joining us. You're um, welcome. So um, UKIP saying today in their manifesto launch that the Barnet formula should be scrapped because that's what's fair, because under it um, there's 20% more public funding going to Scotland per head than, than England and Wales. That sounds fair enough, doesn't it? Uh, no, it doesn't, and it doesn't surprise me to hear UKIP come out with such nonsense. Scotland does not subsidise. For every single one of the past 34 years, Scotland has contributed more tax per head of population than the UK as a whole. So, you know, for as long as Scotland's funding is still determined by Westminster, then the Barnet formula should stay in place. Obviously, if Scotland was to become in future and years ahead fiscally autonomous, uh, then we're in a different position, but the Barnet formula should stay uh, until that time and you know I think Nigel Farage uh, the, the levels of support he gets in Scotland I think will uh, reflect the fact that he's out of touch on these matters. You, you just said if Scotland were to become in future in years ahead fiscally autonomous sounds like a bit of a watering down from your previously stated position which was, is, was that it would be an absolute red line and an immediate demand. Well, I've made this point before and what I'm saying today is absolutely consistent with what I've said before. Even if full fiscal autonomy was agreed uh, for Scotland right now, it would take several years to implement the very limited tax powers that are coming to Scotland at the moment were agreed back in 2009. They don't actually come into force until next year. So that gives, uh, I think, some sense of the, the time periods that we're talking in when it comes to Westminster devolving powers to Scotland. And of course, this argument has been thrown up in this campaign as a smokescreen by Labour to take attention away from the fact that Labour, as are the Tories, are proposing cuts to Scotland's budget now. And the central message of the SNP in this campaign is that we offer an alternative to austerity. We don't think our public services, our economy and the most vulnerable in our society can afford more years of even deeper austerity. We are proposing it modest spending increases that still allow us to get the deficit down, but to invest in the things that really matter. Are those two stances not completely contradictory though because on the one hand you say that you are anti-austerity but full fiscal autonomy would lead to uh, uh, as you say obviously the Barnet formula being scrapped it would also no, mean Scotland not... being more reliant on oil revenues no. which have plummeted 7.6 billion pound black hole it's, it's, it's described as you, you it, it sounds well, like you're trying to make the argument both ways that not... you don't want austerity but that would lead to more well, tax, and spe tax and cuts. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't accept the premise of your, your question there. Having more uh, fiscal and financial powers in the hands of the Scottish Parliament is all about enabling us to grow our economy faster. If you look ahead over the next few years, even without us having more power to grow our economy faster, yes, uh, oil revenues are projected, if things stay as they are with the oil price, uh, to decline by £3 billion by the end of the decade. Our onshore revenues, our non-oil revenues, are projected to increase by £15 billion, five times uh, the, the decline in oil revenues. And that's without having the powers to grow our economy faster. So having more responsibility is about giving ourselves the ability to have strong economic growth to create more jobs and to grow our revenues but uh, to bring to bring this argument back to the here and now the debate at this election is about whether we want parties Tories Labour or Liberals that are proposing more cuts next year and the year after than the year after that or whether we want MPs in the House of Commons who are arguing an alternative to austerity and the SNP is arguing that we can get the deficit down but more responsibly at a slower pace so that we can invest in growing our economy, we can invest more in our National Health Service okay, and other public services and we can lift people out of poverty. I want to talk to you about the impact that an SNP uh, grouping could have in Westminster because you, you have spoken about uh, your red lines. Um, politicians are saying that, Nick Clegg saying it today, you know, the SNP could hold the Labour Party to ransom with the sort of red lines that you're talking about, Trident, uh, for instance, um, if you were to be part of, of um, some sort of a deal in Westminster. Isn't the fact, though, that the, the Labour Party would not lead SNP support to get Trident through, Trident renewal? So when you talk about the potential clout that the SNP could have in Westminster, maybe it's been a bit over-egged. Well, it's for the voters to decide who they want to have clout in the House of Commons. My argument is if there are a big group of SNP MPs in the House of Commons, then firstly, Scotland's voice is heard and Scotland's interests are protected. We're there to fight Scotland's corner, but also that the SNP can be part of building progressive alliances with others for real progressive change that will benefit people across the UK. And, you know, on the issue of Trident, our position 
is very clear. There's a shadow uh, minister of Ed Miliband is quoted in the Scottish media today saying that under no circumstances would he vote for the renewal of Trident. So, you know, if there is a minority government situation in the House of Commons after the election, and remember the SNP has been a minority government in Scotland, we would work to build those kinds of alliances to get the progressive change that we think is necessary. And of course, that's much better for Scotland than being in the position we've been in all too often in the past at Westminster, where the big Westminster parties ignore Scotland and sideline Scotland's interests and our voice is not heard. We can change that at this election by sending SNP MPs to the House of Commons to make sure that Scotland's voice is heard, but we uh, speak up and use that voice to argue for progressive politics. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you very much. Thank you.